Hello, and welcome to TechCubicon SAP. Apologies for the delay, I've been up in the north of England in a forest retreat for a few days, enjoying kayaking, water park inflatable fun, some falconry, and a number of other adventures. If you're new to the channel, I'm Daryl Griffiths, and this is my weekly 180 where I spend 180 seconds on the latest techie news that impacts the world of SAP. At the end, I'll pick my favourite to review in a little more detail in the cubicle. In my SAP Techie News this week, SAP release Emergency Kernel Stack Level 101 for Kernel 793. The Kernel 793 is the kernel for S4HANA 2023 and is also the downward compatible kernel DCK for kernels 781, 785 and 789. This emergency stack level includes fixes for memory leaks in ICM and Web Dispatcher, prevention of core dumps for RFC sessions and a number of other significant fixes. I've included the link to the kernel news and SAP note 3502511 down below in the description. Plus, you can check out the end of episode 15, where I talk about SAP kernel stack level numbering to understand the significance of the 101 number. Amazon AWS has now increased the bandwidth for EFS, Elastic File System, up to 30 gigabytes per second. Only back in March this year was it increased to 20 gigabytes per second from the previous limit of 10. The EFS file system is supported for use in SAP landscapes and can be used for file system areas serving file systems for things like SAP mount. But this performance increase is mainly suitable for MaxDB databases or file systems that sit under SAP Content Server. See more detail in the link down below. GCP announces SAP has certified the new C4 series of general purpose machine types. These machines range from 2 to 192 vCPUs and 7 gig to 1488 gig of RAM respectively. All are based on the Intel Emerald Rapids chipset, which is a Xeon family chip launched in December 2023. Details in the link down below. Also announced is version 3.5 of the Google Cloud Agent for SAP. This version includes additional SAP HANA monitoring metrics, ability to control the agent's system D service, and a fix for the HA availability metric. In Azure, the NetApp file service announces general availability for cross-zone replication, CRR. This has been in preview for months and allows seamless replication from one Azure availability zone to another with 15 minutes of RPO with zero network transfer costs. The link is down below. SAP Tech Bytes have a great new video demonstration of how to consume the SAP BTP Document Management Service, DMS. There are blogs on the subject, but there's nothing quite like watching a demonstration. Daniel Robluski provides a slick overview of creating a repository, storing and accessing a document, all via the API, via Postman. The link to the video on the SAP Tech Bytes channel is down below. From the SAP News Center, Xerox selects Rise with SAP as part of their move to a new business unit based operating model known as reInvention. Xerox has selected to consume SAP Business AI, BTP, and Supply Management Solutions. The article says that SAP Business AI will be deployed initially for business integrity screening. The August SAP Patch Day summary from Onapsis highlights a number of vulnerabilities that have been fixed. The most notable being CVE 2024-41730, which is a 9.8 on the CVSS score and is a vulnerability involving SAP Business Objects Business Intelligent Platform. The vulnerability allows an unauthenticated attacker to compromise an exposed SAP Business Objects system with versions 4.3 and 4.4 being impacted. 4.3 SPO5 is available to download, but no fix yet for 4.4. The next interesting vulnerability in the, in the Onapsis list is for SAP Build Apps. Since SAP Build Apps is SaaS, the solution has already been applied to the platform, but requires the customer developed apps to be built against the higher Node.js version. References, notes, and links are provided in the description down below. My favorite item this week is the August SAP Patch Day Summary from Onapsis, and specifically the vulnerability CVE 2024-41730. This is a serious vulnerability in SAP Business Objects, Bob J. I've personally contacted a major university in the past to highlight how I find they were inadequately exposing their Bob J system to the internet. Unsurprisingly, I got no response back, and so it's probably still in the same state. It'll happen to you. No way, man. For this specific vulnerability, the NIST website shows that it is a 9.8 on the Common Vulnerability Score system. 
there's very little information provided about the vulnerability other than a token can be obtained from a REST endpoint when single sign-on is enabled in enterprise authentication. This specific part means that SSO via Active Directory or some other LDAP-based provider is enabled in Bob J. When this is enabled, an attacker could make a HTTP request to a REST API endpoint within the Bob J application, which would return a logon token that could then be used to gain access to the main Bob J application. Since BobJ is used as a reporting and analytics tool, it very often has connectivity out to other systems, so therefore it could allow an attacker to access data from other internal systems. If those internal systems are not properly secured, for example, maybe the user account that BobJ uses to access those systems has too high a privileges, then it may be possible for the attacker to see data that they should not be able to see. An example would be viewing in a list of user accounts, or worse, viewing a list of password hashes for internal systems. With this information, an attacker could then use BobJ as a mechanism to further access internal systems. What is it? What's wrong? Nothing, it's just a minor glitch. Minor glitch with you seems to turn into a major catastrophe. We all know how users like to reuse passwords. Well, hashed passwords can be dehashed using big databases of hashed passwords known as rainbow tables. This means that from a simple compromise of a BobJ system, further compromise of systems exposed to the internet could occur due to password reuse by end users and administrators. The SAP note for this vulnerability tells us that this vulnerability was discovered internally by SAP. There are no workarounds mentioned and no information on how to prevent access to the vulnerable REST endpoint. This has a consequence for customers that are out of SAP maintenance because they will not be able to patch the system and they will also not know how to secure the perimeter with a web application firewall, WAF, or other security appliance. So thinking about it, how would I approach this issue if I was faced with the above scenario that I've just mentioned? I think I would start by checking if my business use case would allow me to move the BobJ application back inside the VPN instead of exposing it to the internet. There are other tools available that could replace BobJ and allow me to eventually remove the risk altogether. Slightly more security could be applied to an internet exposed BobJ by fronting the BobJ application with a firewall with geolocation and geoblocking capabilities to lock down the allowed source locations from where end users can access the BobJ application. This could kind of prevent access from unnecessary countries and potentially even known darknet outlets. It's also possible to prevent access from web client agents that are not specific internet browsers. This can be circumvented by an attacker, but at a basic level, it might help to obfuscate the service maybe. Finally, it's possible to apply a custom front-end login page in combination with a WAF rule set containing a check against a hard-coded authorization cookie and allow access to the BobJ application pages. This would work easily for interactive use of BobJ, but would be tricky for API-based access over the internet. But for the latter scenario, the source public IP address or range would be known and pre-authorized. This additional login layer adds an initial extra click for end users, but provides a nice, simple method to add a little more security for the vulnerable BobJ system. As always, reference links are in the description down below. Drop me a comment, give the video a thumbs up, and most importantly, subscribe to the channel. Thanks for watching. Bye-bye. Patch day summary from an absent from.